Hey everybody, Jay Adams here, and today I am very, very excited to present to you my new tier list because it has to do with my favorite all-time band, and that is these guys right here, Black Veil Brides, if you can see in the shot. And they have currently five studio albums out, originally from Hollywood, California. At least that's where the core lineup has formed and continued to evolve and grow. They have five studio albums out now that you can go and check out and purchase. Also, this list will be including two of Andy Black's two solo records and Jake Pitt's side project, Alonia, which I also was in a music video for as well called Crazy X. Go check that out. Actually, go check out all of their work. They will all appreciate that. Without a further ado, let's get on with this list. Before we get started, I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be ranking these albums as well. So, gold is pretty self-explanatory, legendary. Silver means it's pretty damn good, but not quite legendary. Bronze means, I will say, that's probably just average. Exist is... It exists. It's just a nice way of saying it's trash, basically. So, let's dive into this. The first record that they released was We Stitch These Wounds back in 2010. So, I'm going to put this one in the silver category. Uh, you know, this album doesn't quite reach legendary status. I just don't feel like the songwriting was quite, quite there yet for gold. Uh, and Andy's vocals were just kind of... You know, at parts a little bit eh, to me at that point, but it's still a damn good record. The songs are really, really strong and powerful, like Perfect Weapon, Knives and Pens, um, and then All Your Hate, uh, Children Surrender. You had the acoustic songs, uh, Mortician Daughter, which is a sweet and passionate song, as well as Carolyn, of course. They also re-released this record. They remastered everything back in, I, I believe, July or August last year. They re-released it. The album got a proper mix to it, and Andy's vocals have evolved. So there's a lot of lot of definite improvement on that as well. I would go check that out as well if I were you. Moving on to "Set the World on Fire," which probably is my favorite Black Veil record. A little spoiler alert. I own this record as well, so I've heard, I've thrown it in my car or any CD player that I've ever owned a hundred million times. Songs like Savior, which has some pretty really cool screaming at the end of the song. Probably one of the most unique screams I've ever heard. But it's, oddly, before that, pretty much just a ballad, you know, pretty, you know, mellow, kind of melancholy kind of ballad. Uh, you have Rebel Love Song on there. Probably my favorite is Youth and Whiskey. That's a heavy banger on that record. Uh, the Legacy, that's another heavy one on that record that I really, really dig. Riffing and the solos definitely really, really progressed. The production on this record really progressed. I think Andy's vocals definitely stepped up on this record. So, to me, this record goes in the gold. I will say that also, too, because it's my favorite record by them. It's the most impactful and influential record to me. And then the next thing here is not an album. It is an EP called, I believe, The Rebels EP or The Rebel EP. Not sure about that 100%. I think the song Coffin on there, that's the only originally released on that EP, was really good. Again, it's kind of just a step up from Set the World on Fire. Some of the riffing from Set the World on Fire is on there. But then, you know, the epic chorus of that song really makes that song pop. They have... A cover of Unholy by Kiss on there. I thought that was okay. Didn't really hit for me on that one. Uh, Zach Wilde played on that, which was pretty cool. But and then they did a cover of Billy Idol's Rebel Yell, which honestly I like more than the original. They meddled it up, made it their own, really. Okay, moving on to Wretched and Divine. I believe this record came out in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm not too long before I went to go see them. I listened to this album for the first time. And I was blown away by it. I loved all the overtures on it. They really didn't do that on the records before. This was a concept album as well. They actually made a movie for this called Legion of the Black. I believe the song in the end really made them go into more of a commercial success, if you ask me. I heard them on the mainstream radio for the very first time. The X have songs like I Am Bulletproof in there, which is a great freaking banger. Nobody's Hero, which is an absolute song. Just basically saying, I'm not your hero. You're your own hero. You save yourself. Done For You is about the only track on there that really doesn't do it for me. And that's not even that bad of a song. Shadows Die. Really, really different. Seems like they're messing with different time signatures or something on that that song. It's really cool. Really, really different from anything you hear. Resurrect the Sun. That's another song that you never really... Like a completely different vibe from anything they ever written before. 
I really enjoy the song Devil's Choir. That's another really, really fun song. Uh, between all the overtures and the violin playing, finally hearing Jinx really, really, really go crazy on this record with his violin playing, I give this album probably a gold tier. And the next album was just simply called BBB4. This record is going to go into bronze for me. I gotta be real. This is uh, just a okay album. You know, the songwriting isn't crazy, crazy strong on this one. I will say Heart of Fire, especially Faithless, are absolute bangers. Faithless is my favorite on the record, especially with that riff and that solo and that chorus. Absolute freaking fire. But it's really just average other than that on the album. Not bad. The production's really good. But it doesn't blow me out of the water like the first three records did. So it's just going to get a bronze ranking. I'm happy that I bought it and all that. It helps support the band and whatnot. But it's going to go into bronze for me. Then the next record is Veil. Vale. And when I first heard this album, I was kind of like, eh. And I'm glad I just gave it a listen just recently because if... I just went off of what I heard maybe when it first came out. I probably would put it in Exists or Bronze. But upon listening to it very, very recently, I really thought this album was fire and had a lot of strong songwriting on it, actually. I really underestimated this album. So I'm going to put it in the silver ranking, to be honest. I like the last one a lot. The Outsider is my absolute favorite from that record. Uh, first one to throw stones or something like that. I really enjoyed that one. When they called our name or something like that. Um, that's a really, really, really good song. I love the song "Wake Up." There's really not a bad song on this record. There's some on here that are kind of okay, you know, but I don't really think any of them are bad. It's really hard to say any of their songs are really that bad anyway. I think it's I think it's the absolute best produced album that they have out so far, in my opinion. To tell you the truth, absolutely blown away with the guitar tones. Uh, Andy's vocals sound absolutely crisp on this record. And, okay, so there's some bonus ones on here. So Jake Pitts' side project, Alonia, which I mentioned earlier that I was in one of his music videos for this record uh, called Crazy Axe. Go look that up. It's on YouTube. He released that about a year ago. It's a really fun song. I would check that out. It's with his wife on vocals, Ina Pitts. She's a phenomenal singer. I got to listen to this record, actually, because he did a album release party, and I went to it, and he simply just played the record and, you know, kind of talked about it song through song, yada, 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 and absolutely was fun to do that, and obviously met him doing the music video. He's a super, super nice guy, and that makes me want to support him and the band even more so. I've honestly not really given this album a full listen since then so bear with me on this one but i will give this album a silver ranking from what i remember i will probably listen to it again maybe i will change my mind and put it in the gold tier next we had the first indie black record and honestly i can't even really give it that much of a ranking because i honestly really haven't listened to it all the way through i listened to the song uh we don't have to dance and there was another one on there i see this is how vaguely familiar I'm with it so there's only like really two songs from it that I really dug so yeah it, it's just gonna kind of go into exist for now it's not bad and the same thing with his other record I need to listen to these albums they're not bad they're not trash but they exist what do you guys think do you guys agree with my list do you think it's absolute crap do you think I should probably go check out Andy's music more let me know do you think I should go check out Alonia more? Do you think I should check out your music more? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear your guys' opinions. And also, I would like to hear your guys' rankings as well. If you guys haven't already, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you like anything about this channel or anything about me. Hit that like button. It really helps out a lot as well. Hit that notification bell so you know what's going on at all times so you don't miss any videos. I do covers. I do reactions. I do tier lists, as you can see here. So I got all kinds of stuff coming, guys. So have a good day and stay tuned for the next one.